The, uh, what, what is your name? Just say your name for the record. Sure thing, Sam River Gandor. Mm -hmm. How are you today? I'm doing great, man. I'm sweating. <laughs> Same. My fan's off, so like you can't hear it running on my microphone, and I'm, I'm sweating too. <laughs> uh, what have you been up to? Uh, so today I just uh, I, I came in uh, early in the morning to work on a few mechanics for the. Well, uh, we'll talk about it in a bit, but it, it's for the. Um, for an unannounced project, it's coming soon. I think I've dropped a, a deadline for it. Uh, I'll announce that online. I think I've seen so, that. Um, yeah, so um, we'll, we'll see. If you have any specific questions, then we'll talk about it. Yep. Otherwise, I don't want to say, I don't want to over speech uh, stuff that's not announced yet. Yeah, for Old TV, what was the inspiration behind it? Sure. Uh, so initially it was in 2015. Uh, there was a friend of mine. So I, I was kind of growing credibility at the time, um, and I was I was trying to get to the office. Um, and I had my two other friends that were also coworkers uh, that were in the office already, and I was on the way, late as usual back then. Um, and I, I asked them, guys, like. In the meantime, just try to conceive of a small like. I asked Borna if you guys remember him. Uh, we've mentioned the guy that says, I'm playing the game, that guy. Mm -hmm. yes, you know. Yeah, so that's Borna. Um, so he's, he's a great programmer. He's, he's been around since the beginning. He's an old friend. Um, I asked them, dude, uh, come up, come up with a game. That's like our Flappy Bird, like Creability's Flappy Bird. He's like, all right, cool. He, uh, once I reached the office, so this is in the span of just half an hour, right? He goes like, all right, dude, I got an idea. You say something, but you mean something else. Then I'm like, so then that reminded me of something I've seen on Facebook back then that was called, um, that was called, uh, I forgot what it was called. Sorry, and I forgot what the post was called, but basically it was like red or blue, but that's in different colors and things like that. So it's because of that like crappy Facebook um, post, um, I started looking that up and I discovered the Stroop test. And with that, dude, that's a really simple uh, idea. Let's totally make a game out of it. And then old TV came to be. Was the was the post was it the, like that dress post where it was like a golden white dress? No, oh, dude, it was it was the it was a post about um, like red, but it was in green, and like blue, but in purple. Hmm. Uh, so some random Facebook post in uh. 2015. Um, so that so when he said uh, make a game that's based off of like you say something but you mean something else, that immediately reminded me of that Facebook post. So um, if it wasn't for that Facebook post, old TV wouldn't be. <laughs> basically we had a lot of ideas dude just that wasn't like the only game in, in our timeline there were a lot of ideas um, but we rolled with that one yeah i have a bunch i've like questions on all your games so don't worry <laughs> that's cool man for old tv did you create all the songs for the soundtrack because soundtrack Absolutely is amazing <laughs> thanks man um so uh now there are a few there are a few fans that know this already but it's just it's literally just just like i was using my taste in music to like determine how the product sounds. Um, so, I mean, that's how it was based. So I, I just reached out to the, these artists. If it was Japan, I kicked a cloud once, uh, Amari Jazz, and the guy that was actually not known, but the guy that made the America song, the one that goes like talking, sleeping, mm -hmm. waking, that one. So, um, Jas, G-H-A-S, I remember. He was a Swedish guy, so I was like, right, he's our neighbor here. Um, I'm in Denmark. Yeah, I just put it along and it was fine actually. I'm working on the soundtrack for, and I've released the new tracks for this unannounced project. And I got to tell you, it slaps. <laughs> it's, it's so much, it's so much better than, than, than old TV in my opinion. Um, and I showed it to like a, like really few, like long-term fans and also testers and basically friends at this point. Um, and they were like, they were really excited uh, about it. Like, like they were laughing. That's how good it is. Nice. Um, so yeah, I, th I think it's an upgrade. Um, do you know what happened to the mobile versions of old TV? I can't seem to like find them on Android and iOS. Just get, like, right. Uh, yep. Yeah. We just found out recently it was pulled. Um, so the guy I worked with was Polish and he was a, pub a game developer slash publisher as well. Um, he's gone quiet now. I don't know what's going on, but basically he, 
pulled it away from the Android store for some reason, probably because it was bad for his portfolio, because his other two games were selling like in hundreds of thousands and up to a million, a few million. So I guess it wasn't good for his portfolio for the Android uh, store. He kept it on the iOS store. Um, I, I don't know why he did that, but we just found out, found out about that recently. We were worried maybe something a bit um, unusual might have, might have happened, but no, it's not making that much money either. Look, I don't really like old TVs port on mobile because we were supposed to find a way to make money was the idea. Like we released it on Steam for free. That was a horrible idea. I should have yeah. priced it on like one or two or something. Yeah. So like, like my parents would go like, River, when are you going to be making money? And I'm like, you know, just give me another year. And mm. it must be eight years later, I started growing a beard and shit. <laughs> I started, get, started getting older. So um, I was wondering because I was writing the the script for my video, and I was like, "It's on." I know it's on iOS and Android because I've had it before, and I tried looking for it. And I was like, "I just couldn't find it." So it's pretty wack. Yeah. Man. So he pulled it. We're assuming because it was it, you know portfolio thing. Um, but honestly, it's it, the old TV port for mobile is really not good mm -hmm. um, because we had to put in ads and like, that's cancer. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> like I wrote a full article. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll link it in the description below. I wrote, I wrote a full article just antagonizing advertisements and how to make good products. Um, how, like how to profit ethically, I guess, was, was the name of the article. I wrote it for, for um, the workplace here. Um, but yeah. And don't worry, I bought cold TV, so I'm supporting you, you know? <laughs> That's cool, man. So what was that? What's old TV? Cold TV was like what? It was the DLC to old TV. Yeah. You know, it was three dollars or four dollars. What was I it? I think it was two or three. I think. Right. So thirty percent of that goes to Steam, um, and the rest of it is just settles on Steam until it hits a hundred dollars. So if I'm lucky, like every month that passes, if I'm lucky, if it crosses a hundred dollars, then it gets transferred, mm -hmm. um, and I get to eat food with a hundred dollars, <laughs> um, or. Uh, Buy toilet papers, things like whatever, man. I was actually going to get into that next question of why old TV was free. It was why is old TV free to play? And like, yeah, is there any reason why it is? Yeah, so the first game was free and only if you remember that one. Um, and the second one was too because so the first, God, I was, I, I was so poor when it comes to understanding business. And just to say, like in the beginning, I was just like really dog shit at school. Um, so I don't understand nothing, math, business, physics, no sciences, nothing. All I knew was I like making pretty things on screen. Um, so, so I literally just like left school and I was like, all right, let me do exactly what I know, what I like doing, what I know what to do, which was kind of video games. O only if it wasn't really well reviewed, it wasn't designed very, with like the customer in mind that was designed like, oh, this is my shit. Honestly, like. Only if was that was the only game where I felt like I was making the greatest game on the planet, and it turned out to be like the most dog shit one I've made <laughs> in my whole life. Um, and that's me looking like in retrospect. Um, yeah, so just I didn't understand business. I didn't understand how to be critical. Uh, I didn't have a critical mind at the time. I was a stereotypical creative. Um, so as I aged, I learned how to be a bit bit more rational. Um, and. Uh, and I went through a phase of like antagonizing the whole being called like a creative person, whatever, mm -hmm. like an edgy, like an edgy teenager or something. <laughs> no, I'm not a creative. I'm fucking rational. <laughs> ben Shapiro destroyed <laughs> that kind of shit. No, man. And and then um, yeah, and then I've come to accept it. I'm like, no, like there's there's great value for creativity. It's uh, it exists everywhere, not just in the creative industry, whatever the hell that means. So like I've left the creative industry over time. Um, sorry, I, I'm, I'm digressing. Uh, so uh, you said, why was it free? Because I didn't think it was worth it. I thought people, I thought if I put a great game that sold for like, it was 1.2 1. 2 million units actually. Um, uh, it, was 50, it was Steam's 50th most popular video game at the time, 2014 on PC. Uh, so I think um, Metal Gear Rising at that time was like, was 61st or something i forgot mm. so in terms of popularity on steam that was cool but um but yeah i just i just thought if i set donations like the money money would come reeling in but that's just very poor business understanding um so for the sequel we're like oh let's put a dlc instead like soundtrack to download or 
some you know a cold tv afterwards but the mistake was to release it three months after the traffic like fucking mm. idiots <laughs> um so we just made ten thousand dollars out of the entire game so I've, I've just been living off of investor money like like mommy and daddy money um what else that youtuber yeah, just, money just, uh <laughs> no i don't even i don't i, I fucking hate ads dude no way <laughs> um so uh i wrote a whole article about it dude <laughs> i haven't seen it by the way so i don't know <laughs> it's very boring um but uh yeah it's just me talking to like uh developers designers and maybe a few business people telling them you know don't do this citation um ads are fundamentally undemocratic because the idea is that you're you're trying to give people an idea of product or a service mm -hmm. somewhere it doesn't belong like if you look back 100 or so years ago you see like this 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 cute photo of some some chick in her 30s or 20s victorian-esque kind of dress and she's posed like it looks like a painting but she's posing with like coca-cola and it looks like the most absurd thing um and like that's like one of the earliest sort of modern day advertisement sort of uh, strategies and it's like the beginning of cancer to me dude so it's, <laughs> it's a necessary evil but um in, in my opinion i want us to shift away from like an attention economy to an intention economy where it's more like steam you know like if i want new games dude it's on the front page i can scroll down that's how you find out about me mm -hmm. um we're building door the exact same way as well where it's uh you know like before I talk about Dora, sorry, YouTube is another example of an intention economy where, dude, YouTube's recommendation feature is like one of the coolest, like, AI software algorith algorithms that ever exist, in my personal opinion. It's magic. Mm -hmm. Like, I remember, like, I was a teenager at the time when it was, like, whatever. And I remember the transitional period up to, like, a year or two years when I was like, I'm not sure if this is good or bad. And, like, by... 2013 2014 i'm like it's so good and now we take it as granted like youtube's recommendation can really suck you in and that's just the beauty of the intention economy it has nothing to do with them putting things and forcing you to watch things they also kind of do that which is shit. but um yeah so that's the difference between intention and, and attention and intention economy doors focusing more on the intention economy where if you like to run as an example you'll find people who will also want to run with you or you might be into gymnastics maybe a video game that's about sports. So that's the intention route that I want to go down. So we're not completely antagonizing the, the attention economy. Um, marketing is fantastic. It's specifically advertising that's the cancer. Advertising means putting something where it doesn't belong um, and trying to make it interesting. I mean, that's fine if you expect it, but if you don't, um, it's, just, it's, just, it's just unethical to me. It doesn't make sense. I feel that i feel that it's like plugging holes in people's or plugging ideas in people's heads you know they're not supposed to be there but these companies are like pulling the strings and all very interesting i should look more into this <laughs> yeah. all tv's first ending i want to talk about this because it's very weird before the dlc came out there's an ending where spoilers ahead where when you beat i believe it was africa there's this uh girl she's like asking where her father is or and she wants someone to get out of the wardrobe could you elaborate more on that i like that expression when you beat africa <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so you know that was more of a that was a like that voice line was more of like it was actually ripped away straight from ant mm. um so it's just supposed to be really like it was it was an attempt to oh, fucking it was cheap it was an attempt at like uh trying to add some depth to a game that was lacking of, mm -hmm. um and it was more of a hint towards the next thing which was supposed to be and actually but you guys know how that went um and if you look at uh only if there is also another and teaser um it's one of the achievements it's called one day where you climb, it's like there's the study room. It's like if you climb climb on top of a desk, then like on top of like this drawer wardrobe thing. Um, and then you look up, you'll clip above the room, which you'll discover that there's nothing around the room. And you'll see this enormous anime painting, which is a commission, I think I paid like $49 for or $69 or something <laughs> of like ants. So it was like Valerie and like, uh, 
I don't know, like the painting and the, 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 the Victorian aesthetic and all that. Um, and the gems, which were a big part of that game. Um, I don't know, I, I might come back to it. Like there's like loads of people really like the atmosphere of and um, although like intellectual, like creatively for me, I can do better. But I guess because it's just so um, deep in its atmosphere, I might consider coming back to it. But to be honest, like let's just say no for now, because uh, there are, we can we can make more exciting things. Gotcha, gotcha. And I actually want to do another. My next question is about cold TV's ending too. You leave for school. Is that an and or only if teaser too as well? Or I oh, know. So so that was sort of just a wrap up of the game. Um, so. It, so that's the funny thing. Like it sounds like it was deep or something, but we flipped it on its head again. It just does. It literally means what it says. Like you know, you just you're just at home the whole time, and then you just leave for school. Gotcha. I thought it was like some sort of allegory, allegory for the creator. Or something like you like stop at game development or something, and then you just go on to some. Else. Yeah. So so one of the beautiful things about human beings, and the reason why we dominated as animals uh, relative to the, any any other animal, why didn't bird dominate? Why didn't other primates dominate? Or whatever is because of our ability to recognize patterns. Even we're so good at it, we can we can see patterns even where they don't exist. This was a perfect example, small example, but was was another example where like I was like, huh, what if we just say like you close the TV and just leave? Like will, will people just take it at face value? And you're like, no, but what's the meaning? <laughs> Dude, he closed the TV, like the game's done. And he went, went off. Um, and I actually love doing that. Like, I, I love making games that really play with your curiosity. Like, with, and it doesn't tell you. Like, like that's what I love to do. Um, because this reminds me so much of when I was, when I was a kid in my parents' home. And my mom loved the Victorian aesthetic. So I guess this is where all that comes from with Anne and whatever. Um, and like my dad had like these 90s and like 80s, like Windows 98, let's say, um, like even 80s uh, equipment um, in like the library, which was really small back then. Um, I remember when my parents used to go to work and if I didn't have a school day or if it was summer, um, like when I was 11 or 12, um, like I would come up with these stories like as if the mirror was looking at me when I'm not looking, um, as if I was looking at myself or something. And that maybe the plants around me can can actually talk to me. Or what if there are secrets in the living room, in this Victorian living room that my mom made, um, that you know that that I could discover. And sometimes I do. Uh, sometimes I find keys that I never know where they go through. So I think that's the inspiration behind. And um, I think if I really think about it, that's where it comes from. So the next question is actually about the sequel to old TV, Plasma TV. Um, well, just a quick side note about Plasma TV, it was a sequel to old TV that was cancelled for unknown reasons. Instead of surfing channels, you were pirating movies as an internet pirate. There is still an alpha available on Game Jolt that I'll link in the description, and that's actually how I got the footage right now. Um, if you guys want to check it out, uh, as I said, I'll link it in the description. Um, anyways, back to the interview. <laughs> What happened with it and why did it get cancelled because I've seen some videos on your channel saying like it's coming and then I looked on Game Jolt and it said it was cancelled so what happened with that? So uh, so folks were calling me like the cancel god <laughs> like I just keep cancelling products one after the other and to be honest the only reason that was happening was, was purely because I wanted to get to door mm. right so I'm like I can make games, but I want to make something that, that means to humanity, whatever. <laughs> um, so it's like I would, I would just like, I was like, all right, let's make some money, but then cancel, make some money, cancel, make some money, cancel. And guess what? Your release door. We are. It's 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 been it released twenty second of June in Denmark. Um, we are running out of funds. So and and we can't find any investors, and I don't want to get investors in, in a position where we're in we're in lesser power and they're hiring. The the worst time to get an investor is when you need an investor. The best time is when you don't need one, because mm -hmm. that way you can like you don't you can get larger funds for for giving out lesser shares. 
if you're coming in as desperate, they're going to demand more, assuming they're interested, they're going to demand more shares and for lesser funds. And you're going to shoot yourself in the foot that way. So I looked at Nav and I was like, dude, let's just make a game um, just to fund ourselves. And and I, I announced it before anything was made. So it was just game design. No actual coding was made, that screenshot you saw. And from the date that screenshot was posted, I believe it was 6th of July. But so so ever since I posted the deadline up until now was the only official cycle of this game. So it's like, I, I think we're likely gonna be in early access, but uh, the game's gonna look really polished already uh, because it's basically, it's using a bit of what makes Plasma look cool and a bit of what like, um, like the new effects and the new, new game ideas uh, that we that we conceived. Um, but yeah, so the reason why Plasma was canceled was, you know, just uh, it was just because I needed to move on, etc. And I kept, and not just that, but Plasma wasn't fun. Like people were like, oh, like it's such a it sucks that that Plasma is happening. Guys, I played it. It's not fun. <laughs> like it's not. It's really not what you think it is. It's going to be another only if. Um, so. So I've salvaged these parts and I've made, I think we can talk about it to be honest since it's releasing so soon. You want to divert a little bit from old TV and talk about yourself if you don't mind. Um, so I was looking at your YouTube channel. There's a lot of cool stuff on there like vlogs, other game projects, and I even saw the social media door. Um, I haven't seen any updates on Door, and I really like the concept. Um, is there any update on Door? And if you could, if you want to explain to the audience what Door is. Sure. So, um, so the elevator pitch right now is that it's an auto meet app, um, where you press one button to meet people within like one hour or in the same day. So let's say if it's jogging, cooking, partying, game cafe, um, barbecues. Um, and in the future, like for if we get enough revenue for us to like rent out like uh, revenue, sorry, venues and sort of design like a board game place or like, or like a gamer cafe or like a, like I always wanted to make personally, like I really always wanted to make like the cinema of video games. And what I mean, what I mean by that is that it's a single player game that you can only play by going to a venue. So what that means is really using VR to its limits. So like using the space around you to engineer the entire venue so that you can feel haptic feedback like everywhere. You can smell things, you can, you can hear things, um, you can feel things. Um, and like, as an example, just to give you what that's like, uh, tell you what that's like, um, like let's say you're playing some game where it's like a first person forest open world kind of, let's say it has a great story or something. Um, and let's say you level up your jump and you're like at like this forest, like imagine sort of breath of the wild. And then like, you just want to like, like, just like jump and then slowly glide. Like you can't physically do that, but with strings we can. So if you level up your jump, what we can end up doing is if you're wearing the VR set is, um, when you do initialize a jump, we can hold you, suspend you in space and it will feel like you're falling. Um, and using wind as well, you can really create that sensation. It's fucking insane. <laughs> um, so in my opinion, this is like the next, uh, this is when VR would really take off. Like whatever we have right now with VR, it never attracted me. And I was one of the first backers for the Oculus, um, Oculus Rift in 2013. I got the dev kit, I thought it was amazing. I had no idea what to do with it. Um, nothing revolutionary is what I'm saying. I thought, okay, maybe some cool things would be I'm made. I'm actually going to link my, or the whole interview down below in the description. It'll link to my second channel, which is also a good time to tell you guys about my second channel. <laughs> I made it a while back, but I had no real use for it. So I think I'll use it for like, um, really long clips or behind the scenes and stuff. So I'll link the whole interview down there if you want to watch it. I'll also link from our Rivers channel. <laughs> I'll link a Rivers channel in the description below so you can check his channel out. And yeah, and I also wanted to thank River for coming out and doing this interview. Uh, he's a really chill guy, and if you want to check out his stuff on his channel, I'll link it in the description. And that's about it.
you guys should really check this game out. I really love it. It's honestly one of my favorite games of all time. Not just not just because it's free, <laughs> but it's also very fun and challenging, and it's really addicting. Also, it's free. <laughs> if I had to rate it, honestly, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. It's one of my favorite games of all time. Also, this game is four years old. <laughs> and, actually, I forgot to mention this to uh, River when we were doing the interview. The day we did that interview, uh, three days ago, today's July 17th, um, July 14th, when we did that interview, was actually the anniversary of Old TV releasing on Steam. So it's now four years old. <laughs> and it aged beautifully. Such a great game. Totally check it out. And yeah. And actually, a lot of you might be asking why I made this video. And it's really pretty simple. Uh. Cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and try again. You have reached a wrong number. How's it going, everyone? Salty Cool Good here. Thank you so much for watching. This is a pretty big video to make about a little indie game I found and loved. I hope that I was able to show you this game in its entirety and to have shown a fun, free to play game. As always, thanks for the dope comments, leave a like, share, notifications, turn them on right now. Right now. <laughs> follow me on my socials, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, join the Discord, follow me on Odyssey, and uh, yeah. Thank you all so much, and what is happening on July 23rd?